I'm Rais Ahmed. I'm a Canadian of Rohingya ethnicity. Uh, I am a human rights activist and I have, as a humanitarian worker, I have traveled to different parts of the world uh, to, to work at the refugee camps and to work uh, in, in extreme poverty. Uh, what I've done so far in, in the case of uh, Rohingya, as a Rohingya myself, I've traveled to the refugee camps myself. I've seen how people live. I've seen, I've spoken to them firsthand. I continue to work with them after I visited them, uh, both on the grounds uh, and here in Canada uh, to bring awareness of their plight and to connect with uh, my government, uh, with other civil society organizations to bring their plight into the light. Uh, there are organizations that are very much involved in lobbying, such as Burma Task Force and uh, Amnesty International, notably. Uh, they have worked uh, alongside, they have worked to advocate the government, uh, to issue reports uh, of what's happening on the grounds. They are on human rights committees. Uh, there are other organizations that have, that have got grand presence, such as Fortify Rights, that have gone on the grounds and interviewed witnesses and victims. Uh, uh, of, uh, of the massacre. Uh, there are organizations that suggest Human Rights Watch that have also done, that have also got presence on the ground, but also have satellites that are taking images of uh, the burnings. Uh, all these sources of information they bring in to the government, uh, for, for, to the Canadian government, to, to, so that they can act on this issue. A major demand is that this issue be recognized, and there's a big push for this issue to be recognized as a genocide. Until we recognize it as a genocide, until governments recognize it as a genocide, we give more, uh, we allow or we help the Burmese regime. We give them, uh, you know, we let them continue their atrocities and their massacres that they're doing. Uh, because right from day one, they are denying what they're doing. Although there is no, there is no grounds for denial. I mean, 600,000 people today as we speak that are in the Bangladeshi side, many of them with physical wounds, with gunshot wounds at the back while they're trying to flee the boats. They speak volumes already. Once we recognize it as uh, a genocide, or even if, if we recognize the fact that there is massacre happening, it is important that, uh, that we take measures to actively stop it. We have to have peacekeeping presence on the ground. Without peacekeeping presence, the massacre is going to continue. Uh, those who are remaining, the very few that are remaining, they will be completely eliminated. Uh, it will be a failure of the world community to see their complete elimination happen before our eyes. Uh, we have to have uh, targeted sanctions on these generals who are ordering the, the massacres to happen. While the genocide unfolds, these generals, they move freely within Southeast Asia and in the rest of the world. We have to have travel bans on them. We have to have targeted sanctions on them. In a sense, this is what the civil society organizations, individuals, they are asking for, for concrete actions, for targeted sanctions, for uh, international media presence, for humanitarian access, very basic rights huh, for these people so that they can live, so that they are not eliminated just because of their skin color or their, or their religion. Individuals, they form the very basics of, of action. Uh, it's with individuals that, that you go into organizations and then organizations towards the political level, towards, the, towards uh, lobbying the government or, or influencing the government, at least in, uh, uh, in democratic societies. So as individuals, a, you, have to, uh, you have to make yourself knowledgeable of the situation. You have, to, uh, you have to know what is happening on the grounds. Now that people know or now that you know, it is very important to not stay in the dark, to, to continue to know. Let it not happen that suddenly one morning you wake up and you read uh, a newspaper article that says, a headline that says, every, there is no Rohingya in Myanmar. They've all been, all the villages have been burned to the ground. It can very well happen. It's already been, as we speak right now, it's just, there's easily about 60% uh, of villages that have been burned to the ground. So it's not too long before 40% is also burned. So. Individuals have to first, A, be informed themselves, and then B, they have to take actions when they are informed, actions in conjunction with organizations that, 
uh, they are volunteering with or they, they affiliate themselves to. Uh, or even individually, you could talk to your members of parliament. You could talk to, you could write to your prime minister's office. So as individuals, if you, if you even just express in single sentence emails, they go a long way. And that's as democratic societies, the governments will act because you've got the, the voter population that is asking them to act. Um, individuals can be very conscious consumers. It's important to be conscious consumers. You have to know where you're, what you're consuming is coming from. Whether we, like, whether we know it or not, like it or not, a lot of this goes into the pockets of these very generals that are conducting the genocide. Their organization, these are facts that, uh, that a lot of these multinational organizations that have begun investments in Myanmar, 50% uh, of their stake, as much as 50% of their stake, are, uh, are, are these military generals or senior of, of officials. We have to talk about governments that are continuing to invest and ask our government uh, through our members of parliament by writing to the, uh, to, to your, the Foreign Affairs Office, by writing to the Prime Minister's Office that Canada must do something in order to stop this massacre, in order to, in order to recognize that, that a population, that in ethnicity, they are a group of human beings. They are just like you and me. They have the right to exist. They are not. They are not to be massacred just because they have a different skin color or a different religion.